Okay, so um, I would have already um, already did talk about uh, how fossils form and how we date fossils. So if you haven't seen that, then um, you should watch that one maybe after this um, to kind of get you know, an idea of, of how do people actually know um, these things uh, are, existed at this time period and how did the fossils even form in the, in the first place. So that's a separate um, uh, little lecture. What we're gonna, just going to do now is a little just tour through um, time essentially through strata so layers you know of rock where fossils have been found and then dated uh, and then what we've done is then assign you know names essentially to different periods of time uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the dates and what you in my course would need to know and other courses you might need to know you know everything and memorize all of them but uh, here we're really it's not a geology course so we're just going to look at a couple key things and I'm going to point out a few of the major events that happened you know leading up to um, today essentially uh, and, and some things you may already know uh, and some you don't so uh, a couple things just to orient you to some of the terminology of the time period so we're going to be largely focused on these three um, eras so that's what they're actually called they're called eras of time Whereas these uh, listed over here, like Quaternary and Cretaceous, are periods. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so these are time periods. These are time eras. Okay. Now, before the main thing that we're going to really spend our time talking about, and this is not necessarily to scale, especially including these, because then we would have to go way down probably below the floor that I'm standing on to kind of really scale this with uh, Archaean and, and Proterozoic. Uh, because you could see here, we're starting around 542 million years ago going today. And then just from this point to here, we're going back to 4.6 billion years. So we're really, really um, skipping you know a lot of stuff. Uh, but those are things I talk about in other places about the first prokaryotic cells, the first maybe eukaryotic cells, and the origins of multicellularity. And so that's kind of where you know some of this is happening. So we're getting um, eukaryotic cells, multicellularity, uh, the first multicellular organism. So likely it's back here in the Proterozoic where we actually get uh, organisms like the sponges. Okay, so marine sponges forming. Um, Maybe even some of the first cnidarians, um, soft-bite animals that are the ancestors of uh, corals and, and jellies that we have today. So those types of organisms probably coming about back then. Okay, so around 600, say 35 million years ago. Um, so not all the way back in the 2 billion, but kind of getting closer to where we're really going to begin here. So where we're st starting with this is talking about the, the Cambrian um, period in the Paleozoic. So again, Paleo... Um, old, you know, meso means middle, right? And seno is new, you know, so this is the more recent, you know, uh, events that have happened kind of closer to today versus the older ones, which are, you know, the, the, that's what we call paleo. Um, so, and meso for, we we'll have like mesoderm is a tissue layer. And so meso is going to always just be middle uh, for a lot of the terminology that we use. So we start off around 542 million years ago with the Cambrian period and the Cambrian explosion. Okay, so that's probably one to know, okay? So the Cambrian explosion is something you'll hear about a number of different times throughout the course. And so it's a time when we have good fossil evidence of a variety of soft-bodied marine organisms. Um, and really all the major groups of animals that exist today have origins at that time period. Even way back then, just shortly after multicellularity, we start to see animal body forms. We have the first uh, chordates, so organisms that would be related to, you know, all vertebrate, you know, animals um, started off with ancestral, ancestral traits, which we'll get through like a notochord and a holodorsal nerve cord and pharyngeal gill slits and those sorts of characteristics uh, came from an ancestor, like a pacaya, which is known to the fossil record, which is similar to an amphioxus, which we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about chordates uh, that we have today. And they, so we have evidence of them back then. So way back then. So get, they're preserved in the fossil record. So that's kind of an important thing about uh, what's, what was happening. All different kinds of marine organisms. Now we get into, but nothing on land. So it's all in the oceans. But then as we go up to the next period, the Ordovician, that's where we start to see land. All right, so that's supposed to represent a, a mushroom uh, or a, a fungi. Sorry. So this is uh, 
organisms start to colonize the land. So we start to see the first um, fungi on land and some land animals, all right? Some of these organisms coming up onto land. In the Silurian period, the next one, uh, we start to see the beginnings of plants, of, of different types of vascular plants um, coming on the scene uh, on, on land. And so they're starting to spread out and we see other types of um, organisms like, it's here, the first uh, interesting spiders and centipedes. So not insects, but like arachnids and these ancestors. So nothing with wings, nothing that can fly or anything yet, but those kinds of uh, arthropods uh, who are ancestors to uh, the ones that we have today started to come on the scene through the fossil record. We see, so again, a lot of, a lot of land uh, or animal diversity uh, coming about as well. As we hit the Devonian uh, period, we start to see real the, the first bony fish. Okay, so people will say first fish, some things back here, the Cambrian, and, and other people don't call um, Pachy and Amphioxus fish, they refer to them as worms and all because they're not vertebrates. Um, so depending on some of these terms that are not true scientific terms, that are more common terms, different people mean different things when they say them. Okay, so actual bones, bony fish uh, came on the scene in, in this particular period in the Devonian. And then shortly after that, then we start to see them moving onto land and we see the first amphibian. So during this Carboniferous period, we start to see uh, seed bearing plants, which is very important for us. And, um, and amphibians and a lot of different types of amphibians on land. And then the beginnings, you know, of, of reptiles will start to come around here as we get into the Permian period. Um, so there are, there are vertebrates, quadrupeds, you know, they have four limbs. They can now breathe air, you know, on, on land. Uh, and then we'll eventually get the origins of that, an amniotic uh, egg, which is what we see in reptiles, you know, and, and mammals. Also here around this Permian period, we start to see a lot of uh, insects with wings um, starting to become a lot more abundant. And let me just check here, see if there's anything to add in there. Um, also, just in terms of plants, we have uh, um, well, gymnosperms you know, start to uh, come on the, the scene as well uh, in the Permian period. Um, so, uh, and some beetles, so wing, some of the winged, you know, other winged insects and dragonflies, those sorts of things. Triassic is where we start to see both the first mammals um, and uh, our ancestors of mammals and uh, the first dinosaurs. And ancestral mammals kind of coming on the scene. Um, the seed, sorry, cone bearing plants, you know, start to become incredibly dominant. Uh, and that's what we mostly have then through the Jurassic period is this time of great forests of gymnosperms, um, which are the, the cone bearing plants, uh, like fir trees and pine trees and those sorts of trees, uh, and the all different varieties of dinosaur. Something to keep in mind, you know, as well is that um, there are many famous dinosaurs that we see um, in shows and books and, and all sorts of uh, films. Uh, and many of them didn't exist at the same time. Many of them were separated actually by tens of millions uh, of years. And so for example, um, the T-Rex and a Stegosaurus were separated by millions and millions of years. So there was no overlap between them at all. Uh, T-Rex and Triceratops did overlap. There's actually fossil remains of uh, two of them right next to one another potentially you know, were killed in some way while they were fighting one another. Uh, and so we, we also have preservation of um, nests with eggs in them and, and organisms in protecting the eggs. So we have all kinds of interesting uh, fossil remains of that even indicate behaviors, you know, of some of those uh, organisms from that time period. As we get into the creation, Cretaceous period, we start to see uh, more mammals. We also have some uh, uh, feathered dinosaurs and the beginnings of birds, you know, coming on the scene. Uh, mammals really start to take off, you know, during this time. So um, we also have like some, the marsupials uh, as well are starting to um, come on the scene in the Cretaceous period. And then we have a, a mass extinction. Okay, so that's kind of where we separate, you know, the different eras. They're separated. 
time-wise, often with major extinction events. So something changed that had us lose a large number of organisms. Uh, and so like, like here, um, where we go from the, the Paleozoic you know, to the Mesozoic, uh, there's just a, a huge extinction, about 95% you know, of uh, marine species, about 50% of most families of animals um, gone from the fossil record. So most likely extinct from an event that took place there. Same thing here. That's the time place of the extinction of the dinosaurs um, around 65 million years ago. And then that denotes the beginning of the Cenozoic modern era. So that and that's where mammals really start to take over. Um, we start to get um, the uh, angiosperms, the flowering plants start to come on the scene and we start to get a much more variety of flowering plants and where they start to become even more dominant in spreading uh, seeds. So they're all so gymnosperms are seed-bearing plants, angiosperms are seed-bearing plants, but they have different mechanisms that we'll get into when we go into the plant biology part. We also start to see the first uh, bipedal mammals and uh, hominid you know, ancestors uh, around here in the uh, Neogene. And then as we get into the quaternary period, we see uh, an ice age occurring. So uh, different types of mammals. There are some that are extinct because of the, the ice age. Others uh, diversify. Uh, and then we start to see the first ancestors of humans right during the quaternary and that's kind of i mean just a very quick overview of you know hundreds of millions of years with a few highlights of um, things that we will cover in the course so that's kind of the main reason that some of the things are chosen that i chose to include some of these things is because in our class we're going to have a biodiversity um block, which will take up actually a majority of the course, going through groups of plants and animals. Also, we'll cover fungi and, and proteins and other things, but we're, a lot of plants and animals, and this then puts them into perspective. When we go over them as well, we'll be talking about them from a comparative anatomy, uh, an evolutionary perspective, a physiological perspective, and comparing a, a lot of the differences that they have. And then, you know, so will relate some of those ancestrally to the, the fossil record as well. And that's kind of the, the place of this particular uh, bit of information is to kind of give you, you know, time period when certain ones came on the scene. We know certain ones existed before others. Uh, and then there are huge gaps before some new group comes on the scene, you know, from say ferns, you know, to the, the uh, gymnosperms uh, and then to then the angiosperm. So, there's time that goes by, often hundreds, you know, sometimes of millions of years before we see the new you know, group coming about. And the same with, with animals as we'll go through those. So for my course, definitely know the eras. I know the main dates where the eras you know, begin uh, and a few of the details of uh, some key things that may have happened during there, not necessarily the periods. You don't have to memorize in our course. Um, we're not going to go through that as you would in maybe a geology course.